Welcome to Lecture 2 on the Media. We left off talking about advertising revenue for um, print media and how it's declined over the years. If you look at the figure 7.3 from your textbook, you can see just how dramatically it has declined since 2006 when we went from $46.6 billion to $9.3 billion. Now, online revenue hasn't exploded to replace that, so that just goes to, that just begs the question where are people getting their news from these days? Let's talk a little bit now about the broadcast media. Radio and television are also part of the traditional media. Broadcast media is essentially radio, television, and other media that transmits audio or video content. Broadcast media do very little of their own reporting, and instead they rely on leading newspapers or digital media to essentially set the agenda. Politicians and others try to manipulate the news by providing sound bites to try to dominate the news coverage of that time. Let's start talking a little bit about radio news. From the 1920s, radio carried political speeches, campaign advertising, and coverage of political events such as national party conventions. Beginning in 1933, Franklin Roosevelt used radio with remarkable effectiveness. Roosevelt spoke to his audience on a personal level, seemingly in one-on-one -on -one conversations as though he were actually sitting on the front porch or in the parlor with them. These fireside chats, as he called them, established a standard that politicians still follow today. Television and the internet have not displaced radio. Radio continues to reach more U.S. households than does television. Radio remains an important news source. Talk radio emerged in the 1990s with the conservative radio host Rush Limbaugh, who's now deceased, and Sean Hannity and others. National Public Radio is also known for its in-depth reporting. Digital formats such as online radio and podcasting have also increased listenership. Television news. Television added a dramatic visual dimension. By 1963, the two largest networks at the time, CBS and NBC, had expanded their evening news program from 15 to 30 minutes. Television has changed U.S. politics more than any other invention. With its immediacy, its visual imagery and drama, television has emotional impact that print media can rarely match. It cuts across age groups, educational levels, social classes, and races. Television provides instant access to news from around the country and the globe, permitting citizens and leaders alike to observe events firsthand. The average American watches nearly five hours of television a day, and most homes have more than two television sets. Television remains a top source of news. Cable television created the round-the-clock 24-7 news cycle. Providing this much original news content, however, is challenging. Some cable networks, such as Fox and NBC, have moved into programming with more commentary, overemphasizing a particular ideological perspective. In other words, opinion is 85% of Fox and MSNBC's um, airtime. So until the late 1980s, sorry, the network programs on CBS, MSC, NBC, and ABC captured more than 90% of the audience for television news in the morning and early evening. 25 years later, fewer than 33% of those using television during prime time were actually watching one of the big three networks. Politicians generally consider local broadcast news a friendlier venue than national news. National reporters are often inclined to criticize and question. Also, comedy talk shows with political content 
use humor and sarcasm to discuss topics and to provide criticism. Their viewers tend to be younger and, and less well informed about politics. The digital media. There have been major changes with the rise of the internet. Its emergence in the media market parallels the impact of the penny press or the radio in the 19th century. 63% of younger people often get their news online. Streaming video is a growing substitute for television for some viewers. There are also news aggregators which collect news from different sources and put it in one location for easy viewing. These include things like Google News, Reddit, and Real Clear Politics. This is a screenshot of Real Clear Politics on their main page. As you can see, they cover a lot of areas. They have policy, markets, world defense, energy, health, science, etc., etc., plus they have extensive polling. And you'll see if you look at uh, Tuesday, they have articles from the New York Times, the American Spectator, The Guardian, The New York Post, USA Today, CNN, uh, just whatever. They've got it all. Just as television news revolutionized American politics in the 1950s and 60s, the Internet is bringing major changes to American politics today. The internet allows people to access multiple news sources instantly, including political videos on YouTube and other similar sites. The internet also allows people to communicate with friends about politics via Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking sites. More than three quarters of Americans now own a smartphone, and even more own a cell phone of some kind. As individuals have been able to use the internet on mobile devices, its impact has grown. More than four-fifths of all Americans, or 85%, have used a mobile device to access the news. The internet is a primary source for news for about half of the American public. Now, Twitter, nearly three-fifths of Twitter users turn to it to keep up with news about an event as it is happening, or about twice the rate of Facebook users. Using Twitter in this way has long been the case among news organizations. In the election season, reports on tweets from candidates, pollsters, and reporters occur frequently. All of the major networks and most major newspapers have Twitter feeds, and in many cases, news anchors and reporters have their own feeds as well. Twitter provides an additional means for news organizations to communicate and build followings and also to receive feedback from their viewers. Campaigns not only sent messages out via Twitter, but also used the platform as an early warning signal of what reporters and the public were tweeting about. Candidates not only used Twitter to speak to their supporters, but even debated with one another directly through correspondence. According to the Pew Research Center, only 23% of US adults use Twitter and of those users, users, the most active 25% produced 97% of all the content on Twitter. In other words, nearly all tweets come from less than 6% of American adults. This is not a remotely good representation of public opinion, let alone newsworthiness, and treating it as such will inevitably result in wrong conclusions. But in other words, with the explosion of online media, there's also something called a digital divide that has developed. Daily internet users with high-speed home internet access and the technology and literacy skills to go online for things like employment, news, politics, entertainment, and more, this created disparities in internet access according to age, race, ethnicity, and income. So there is a digital divide out there with people who have access and people who do not. This is a table from your textbook that shows, you know, the use of online news and how it has grown. Internet has grown at the expense of newspaper and television, while radio has generally stayed pretty consistent.
going to stop lecture two there.